Hello everyone, welcome back, day two of this new journey that we're taking together, some of us at least. Um, the big question, what is this all about? You know, I've been a, um, a cyclist, a pedal cyclist, and a commuter for probably 12, 13 years now, um, ever since university when I was trying to save some money. I lived in Vancouver, Canada, and um, geographically speaking, everything is quite close. Um, so I was able to, you know, actually beat traffic, beat cars, beat buses, um, and, and cut down on time and also expenses. Um, you know, I remember buying my first old 10-speed and uh, immediately going to work, um, trying to learn how to maintain it and uh, upkeep it myself. It was something that really interested me. So that's that's my passion in cycling, and it's brought about it a certain lifestyle that that I appreciate. Um, honestly, that I think other people appreciate in me uh, as well. Um, so. Electric bikes for me are, are just a great opportunity to get more people into the cycling lifestyle, using bikes on a regular occasion. And the more people that are cycling in this world, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, more people means more infrastructure for cycling, better uh, cycling roadways, um, which is, is just makes it better for all cyclists involved. You know, let alone the... Um, benefits from uh, a planet point of view, you know, um, cutting down on carbon emissions from vehicles, although there's a lot of electric cars these days, which is pretty cool. Um, it has more to do with, there's just something, um, it's exercise, you know, it's, it's bringing you into the present when you're cycling, there's a lot going on, you're traveling, uh, wind is blowing in your face, and you know, the smells are coming in your nose, you're seeing new things, your your senses are alit. And um, I think that takes people out of their the mental gymnastics that we do on a daily basis um, and brings us into the present again, which uh, is relieving for me personally. Um, I always feel better after I've uh, just biked even even to work to commute to the grocery store and back or anything like that so that's why I'm so passionate about it um, getting more people on bicycles is definitely uh, the big question how how do we do that and it's not just getting people on bicycles that's kind of one of the reasons why I have an issue with a lot of the online bike companies that are uh, marketing and and um, trying to sell to you direct is they they're in <laughs> You know, they're, they're making a product a little worse and cheaper than anybody else. That's really what they're all going for. And a lot of people are buying into that because, you know, when you're cross-shopping or something like that, a lot of the specs look the same. What changes is the ride quality, um, the ride characteristics, how you feel on the bicycle, how well it operates for you, how fastly it gets out of tune thus gives you a kind of shaky experience um, and if you don't already have a regular service provider for maintenance and that bike starts to deteriorate in terms of quality and you don't have anywhere to take it then you know you're just not going to continue to ride so I think that's one of the reasons why they're so popular and you know obviously they're monitoring which reviews get put up onto their sites but a lot of good reviews are coming through on them and and it's because there's a quick hit um, you know, the initial ride on an electric bike is so fun, especially one of those rear hub bicycles that is kind of part moped, part bicycle. You can run at 100% electric assist using nothing but a throttle. So getting on one of those for the first time is almost like having a, a low-powered motorcycle. Um, it's, it's just a lot of fun. Um, and so you get that kind of initial hit, but every time you use that throttle thereafter, you know, you're... <laughs> enjoyment of it goes down just a little bit 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 and of the you know tens of thousands of bicycles that have been bought online uh, as i read through the forums and things like that you know the electric bike community those that are really hardcore into 
into electric biking. Only a very few of them are on these these types of bikes. You know, it's it might be a good way to get into electric bikes, um, and that's kind of the positive outlook that I've taken at it from our shop's perspective. Is um, you know, it's it's a way for more people to get into electric bikes that might not have otherwise, you know, had that amount of resources or wanted to put that amount of resources towards, you know, a nicer electric bike uh, right out of the gate because they weren't sure if they were going to enjoy it or not. So there's definitely a, a pro there. Um, the issue that I have with it is that it could also deteriorate um, or prevent you from getting into electric biking if that bike that you spent twelve, thirteen, fourteen hundred, fifteen hundred dollars after accessories and tax and everything only works for you for four to six months. You know, that's not giving you a very great experience. Something breaks, gosh forbid, and you have to try and get a hold of one of those companies. They're in it for the quick buck, that initial sale. Um, and that's why they, they market and advertise so much. And just talking about electric bikes is going to bring up a slew of electric bike advertisements for the next month uh, on YouTube, Facebook, you name it, Google. Um, they're just going to start popping up. I'm sure you've experienced that already. Um, and that's that's where it goes against my my desires is to get as many people onto electric bikes as possible for the long haul. Get them into the lifestyle of cycling, into the lifestyle of, of um, getting out there on the bike nearly every day. So that's that's where I stand. Um, continuing along with you know where we left off yesterday, reason behind this kind of series, um, and it's going to change and evolve as 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 it goes. This is just. Uh, Honestly, me warming up, trying to get used to this whole uh, medium and, and interaction. I'm trying to get online so I can help more people like I do on a day-to-day -day basis in real life. Find the right e-bike for them so that they can get into this lifestyle. So, um, you know, I, I, I just like sharing stories of people that are that have success stories. You know, we look at it in so many other um, arenas, um, you know, if you want to learn marketing, you're going to learn from somebody who's had great success in marketing, uh, you know, sport athlete coaches are, are often ex-athletes themselves, somebody who has excelled in the sport and is now turning around and, and teaching others. And, you know, that that's kind of why I wanted to um, do this series is, you know, if you're interested in a bike that we're talking about here, hopefully you can identify a little bit with the characteristics of, of the person who we've helped get on it. If you can see them yourselves in, in their shoes a little bit and, and similarity um, to them, then I'm sure that that electric bike for you would work really well. So these are just unbiased um, stories of people who have gotten on the electric bikes and who are, in my criteria, succeeding, which is you know, riding a lot, coming back by the shop a lot, and telling us how much they've, they've loved the bike. So without further ado, um, today we're going to talk about a, a gentleman named Steve. Um, he's got a really cool last name. It's too bad I can't share it. But, um, you know, Steve, again, a, about a 60-year-old male, um, used to pretty actively ride 10-speed race bikes, um, and still fit, still surfing, um, and looking for a bike. He was actually shopping with his wife, and and I probably do his his wife's um, a story here um, in the next few sessions because she's also had great success with her bike. But you know, was looking for a bike for himself and his wife, and um, you know, started the conversation as we start every conversation. Difference between rear hub motors, difference between mid drive motors. So. Again, rear hub motors are going to have a lot of raw power. Uh, you're going to get that kind of part moped, part cycling experience, ability to run 100% electric assist using nothing but a throttle. The mid drive is going to give you that authentic cycling experience. Um, it's going to amplify your pedal stroke. It's not going to do all the work for you. Um, the pedal assist on it is, is much more refined. It's, it's monitoring how hard you're pushing on the pedals. And giving you power back in relation to that, um, as opposed to the 
the rear hub motors, which are, are just um, speed settings. So as you increase the pedal assist level, the bike goes faster and faster, regardless of how hard you're pedaling. There's a little bit of a disconnect between the pedal and the motor's output, which can be a lot of recreational fun. Don't get me wrong. There's definitely a place for the mid or for the rear hub motors. Um, for Steve, he being an ex-cyclist, um, he he likes that sensation again. You know, he likes the act of pushing on the pedals. Um, so after getting him to try one of the rear hubs and then one of the mid drives, you know, he was a quick um, believer in the mid drive motors. So we were going through a few different bikes. His price point, you know, there was a bike on sale at the time, which was the Raleigh Retro Glide Royale 2.0. Originally twenty six fifty, it was on sale for twenty one ninety nine at that time, and he really liked the features of that bike: um, hydraulic disc brakes, Bosch Active Line Plus motor, and then the price point was just phenomenal. So he was on one of those, you know, a cruiser bike that that relaxed seat post angle and the bars that come back towards you. They're one size fits all uh, or fits most and. Steve is a relatively tall individual, 6'1", 6'2". And so, you know, I kind of, I showed him the, the Benno E-Scout 9D is what we had at the time. Um, and, you know, knowing that he was a, a cyclist, I, I got to explain to him, you know, the difference between this ride posture with the C2 angle back like that and one that's much more vertical, it's going to give you a much more um, traditional cycling posture and that's something that he was used to and, and felt comfortable in it's kind of like muscle memory um, when you get onto a bike like that so the Benno e-scout is a very you know European ride posture um, it's very comfortable you're on top of the pedals so it's a very tall bike uh, you're sitting right on top of the pedals but the handlebars come back towards you so you're still in a very upright proper position really is the way to describe that riding posture. Very popular in, in Europe, uh, in old English bicycles um, especially. Not a, not a style that was particularly ever very popular in North America as far as my knowledge goes, but definitely with the electric bikes I can see the appeal of it and it's something that I find very comfortable to ride as well. So. A city comfort bike maybe is a, a you know one way to describe it. Um, when I was watching him ride the retro glide, that cruiser, you know, he kind of had this. His his legs were going forward like this, and his upper body instead of being straight up like you'd want it on a beach cruiser, he was leaning forward. He was just used to this kind of uh, forty five degree angle, ninety degree angle um, of uh, traditional pedal cycling. So. Got him on the e-scout, you know, he really liked that um, for a number of reasons. He wanted to be riding with his his family, um, and so that kind of comfortable posture was nice. He was an ex-cyclist, so having that downward pedal and the mid-drive motor gave him that kind of same experience, which he was missing. And uh, he had some desire to throw a surfboard rack on there, um, put a trailer off the back to be able to uh, drive around his, his aging dog uh, who actually had a cast on at the time so wasn't able to run along. Um, and those Benno bikes are really great for that. He calls them utility bikes. It's a plan utility so the fact that they're useful um, tools for for transporting, for alternative modes of transportation, commuting, um, and hauling a load um, essentially. So. That really fit in. Um, you know, it's got the Schwabe Supermoto X tires. Again, I talked about that last time, but you know, those 2.3 width tires uh, really give you a nice um, grip on the road as you're traveling a little faster on, on an electric bike. And they also pick up a lot of the shock, so they're great shock absorbing tires. Um, this bike doesn't have any suspension anywhere. Part of Benno's MO is, is to have a very aesthetically pleasing bicycle and you know this is a very elegant classic looking bicycle that a uh, suspension on there would just look too modern, too, too um, 
activity focused, you know, not not that kind of classic aesthetic appeal. So uh, that's where those tires really come into play is it, it picks up a lot of the shocks, which is nice. Um, and you know, it has really great uh, mechanical components as well, both Shimano derailleur uh, shifter and Shimano hydraulic disc brakes. So knowing that he was going to be riding quite a bit, um, that definitely played a huge part in determining, you know, that's going to keep maintenance costs down a lot and time of maintenance down a lot. So he's going to be able to go for longer intervals without coming back. So um, for all those reasons, you know, he hopped on it. Uh, I only had a medium in the shop at the time and he was sold. I told him I'd order the large and got the large and it just fit him, fit him like a glove. It was a great, great fit. And, uh, you know, that was about a month and a half ago. And he came in a few days ago and uh, said he's literally been riding every single day. And that just goes to show that that walking through that process with people, getting them educated first before just trying to sell them uh, a bike, you know, really allows us a better chance of success in our long-term goal, which is creating a rider, you know, creating somebody who's, who's allowing their lifestyle to be changed by this electric bike technology. And for him, it certainly has been, you know, says he got into the car and there was, there was cobwebs in it because he hadn't driven his car for a week. He's been riding the electric bike everywhere. Um, and because we got the right bike for him, I truly believe that. I think, I, I believe that that's going to stay, you know, it's, it's not, something that is that quick hit that he's, he's having a lot of success with initially and then is going to, you know, uh, slacken off over time. So I was super happy to hear that, um, you know, him and the family, his son ended up picking up one later. Um, and so all three of them with the dog off the back of the trailer are riding around our community now, all, you know, super excited and, and just out there with their family, their loved ones and enjoying life. That's what, that's really what it's all about. And um, you know, I just feel so happy to be able to play a part in, in helping people achieve that goal. So again, thanks for tuning in guys. Um, and, uh, looking forward to, to evolving, to changing, um, becoming more articulate about what this whole thing is about and, you know, why I'm doing it and what, what we're trying to achieve here together. So, uh, thanks for your guys' patience and, and looking forward to continuing this journey with you guys. All right. Thanks. Take care.